Hello, in this video I'd like to talk about Pegasus for Entertainment and Media. To set up retargeting in Pegasus from Blade, we first need to import characters from Blade into Pegasus. You may need to check the server settings have been correctly set. These settings include the IP number and name of the server, the port number and the vertical axis coordinate system. This button lets you check if there's a successful connection. Once this is done, you can import new poses from Blade into Pegasus. In this example, we have a scene with two characters, a virtual camera and an actor. You can see these in the outline that the hierarchy for the character in the virtual camera have successfully imported into Pegasus UI. The next step is to find a good pose for matching. In this specific clip, there is a T-pose at the end which can be used. Once this pose is set up, we can import our avatar for association. In this example, we'll be using an FPX called Dual Rigged. Once it is imported, you can see the avatar in the viewport. Now the avatar is ready to be associated with the mocap data. There are various ways to do this association. To create this association, first select a bone from the motion capture, hold down control and add to the selection a bone from the avatar and press this leftmost button. This has scaled the mocap data to match the avatar and moved the avatar's position to match the motion capture's position. If necessary, small adjustments can be made to the pose for a better match. Individual bones can be rotated to better match the pose of the motion capture. This process automatically links bones from source to targets, but if for some reason a bone does not link automatically, associations can be made manually. This can be done by selecting a bone from the source, while in selection mode, and then selecting a bone from the avatar holding control, and this button will create a link from bone to bone and create an association from the source to target bone. Once happy with the setup, a template can be saved out and remembered for future use. This template is remembered and can be used to apply all these links and associations to be automatically created. In addition to these associations of bones between source and target, there is also an IK constraint created for the hips. In almost all applications, IK constraints are also desirable for the feet. There are a variety of ways this can be done from this button. A constraint with an offset, a position constraint, an orientation task, or you can snap the avatar's hands or feet to the source bone. For example, select the source bone, control select target bone. The default action will maintain an offset between the source and target. For the left foot, uh, we'll use snapping mode. The play button um, streams data from Blade. Oh, Blade needs to be running. The avatar is now being animated from the source data. The right foot maintains an offset from the mocap data, while the left foot keeps a closer proximity to the source bone. You can change the constraint type by selecting the constraint, deleting, and recreating as a different type. Uh, select source, target, and recreate. Now when we press play, you can see the avatar's feet match much more closely. How closely these tasks match can be determined from the Arkinimo tab by changing the weighting presets as a low, medium and high. These weighting presets will tune the solver accordingly, boosting the weight, adding more importance of one task with respects to the other tasks or constraints. There is now a high precision on the feet because the weights of these tasks have been boosted.
more constraints can be added to the setup if desired. For example, constraining the source's chest to the avatars can give good results. So for example, the source's neck bone can be used to drive the avatar's chest. In this specific case, it's better to maintain the offset from source to target. This new IK constraint follows chest position and maintains position from source to target. This is one of the setups that can be used for retargeting. Retargeting can be further tuned by excluding bones in the avatar from the solver. Selecting the head allows us to exclude the entire hierarchy from the joints by unchecking this option. The whole hierarchy is now excluded. If you are not solving for fingers, this can be repeated for the hands. After hitting play, the same result is achieved with fewer bones in the solver. Some bones aren't important for the retargeting of body animation and can be safely excluded. Now that the character is set up, we can work on the virtual camera. The first step is to import a model of the virtual camera, which will be camera.fbx. You can see the camera has imported into the viewport. To associate the model to the virtual camera data, the source needs to be selected, then control select the target, and associate character without scaling. Ah, we need to select the bones rather than the groups. This can be easy to do through the outliner. First select a bone from the source data, control select one bone from the camera model, and then associate character without scaling. This will match the camera model's position to the source data's position, but it has not matched the orientation. This needs to be done manually using the rotation manipulator. Can rotate using the uh, group or the bone. Now that the camera model is matching the source data, and once we're happy with that, we can save out the project and pressing play should now show animation on both the avatar and on the camera model. If adjustments need to be made to how models and avatars have been matched to the source data, the simulation can be stopped and poses can be updated as necessary and the process can be started again. Thank you for watching this video on Pegasus Media and Entertainment.